Hey guys, Chet Donath here, and uh, today I want to kind of talk about um, whether you're doing TSI, timber stand improvement, or if you're just trying to improve the benefits of uh, your habitat for wildlife, regardless of what kind of uh, improvements you're making there, you're going to uh, come to a point where you're going to have to start uh, selecting different species and stuff. And this, this video isn't about like uh, the types of species or identifying those species, okay? This video is more uh, along the terms of like how I go into looking at timber stand improvement and how I kind of choose what lives and what dies basically. So I have behind me a little stand here and some of the first things that I start looking at now, now this is all going to depend completely on your goals. So you have to look at your goals first. Number one, are you primarily, do you only care about timber and having the best uh, timber, the most straightest timber and the most timber that you can get on an acre? Or are you more worried about, um, you're worried about that, but you also, you want to make sure that you have the species that are going to uh, provide a good habitat for whitetails, turkey, and all, all the other little critters that run around in the woods. That's where your goals are going to be uh, paramount. So just right off the bat, we see we got this hickory tree right here. It's a nice straight hickory, not any bad. It's got some weird stuff on the bark, but not too bad. Pretty, pretty good, healthy tree for the most part. And right behind it, we've got a... Uh, what I believe it's, it's in the, the red oak family. I think it's a, a post oak, to be honest with you. But I'm not 100%. I'd have to look closer, but not too worried about that yet. So we got an oak, and it's a nice straight oak. Um, I don't see any blemishes. Uh, the stump around it looks really good. It's nice and straight. It doesn't have a branch until about, uh, well, I mean, there's some small branches, but like the main branch is probably 12 foot tall right there where it actually splits off. So this is gonna be, you know, if we were to cut this up and get all this stuff around there, this is gonna be a pretty decent tree really for timber value. And so because it is an oak, even though it's not a white oak, um, you know, a lot of deer and squirrels prefer white oaks over black oaks or red oaks, but it's still an oak. And even though they're not gonna go for it first, it'll still provide forage for them. I don't know if you can see it, but behind me is another one exactly the same uh, species, but it is a lot smaller diameter. They're very close. They're probably only three feet away. And I'm swimming in eastern red cedars, okay? We have zero shortage of eastern red cedars, and that's one thing that you want to look at whenever you're trying to find out what species you want. So if you want a good diversity, which is so a good diversity is great for wildlife. That may be something you want to think about. If you don't have any eastern red cedars on your property, which I will find hard to believe, might be something you want to save. But in this case, the oak is way more valuable, not only for timber production, but also way more valuable for wildlife, especially deer and turkey. All right, so what else do we have here? We have a lot of eastern red cedars. Um, if I look further back and over here, we're gonna uh, browse over here. As you can see, I actually cut that down. That was a, an elm and it was dead. Um, so we have a hickory, we have another black oak, and we have another couple hickories here, more hickories. Uh, in the very foreground, there's a white oak. And I'm gonna talk about that in another video of why I may actually keep that white oak, even though it look, it's god awful for timber production, but it, it actually might have some value. And I wanna talk about that in another video, but I'm not gonna do that today because that's way too much information for one video. So we got this black oak here that looks very nice, very straight, very nice tree. And we've got this black oak here, very nice tree. Now, pretty easy to pick which one, okay? So we have two black oaks right here that are right next to each other. No brainer. Okay, if they're both very straight and they both have branches that are pretty high, so they're gonna make good timber trees, and they're both the same species, I just, I just, I pick the healthier one. And then if they're both exactly the same health, I pick the one that's bigger. This one in front is almost twice the size as the one in the back, so the one in the back is gone. The one in the, the, the back actually too, uh, it, you may not be able to see it, but the top is kinda, kinda wompy. And so uh, that, that one will be the one that I choose to go. This hickory, hickory here, say you, you have like 100% stand oaks and you have almost no hickories. You may think about leaving it, but <clears throat> one reason I'm definitely not is because we got some weird stuff in the bark going on. We actually got a hole right there and it looks like the woodpecker's been hitting this really hard. It's on the outside of the field edge, so uh, it probably um, is kind of an open target. Other than that, it's a pretty healthy tree, but I'm taking it out because it's too close to this oak tree. 
if I wanted more hickory, say, for whatever reason, their, their timber value is not even close to an oak. It's not even close to being as valuable as an oak. Um, you know, but hickory's not necessarily a bad tree, um, especially if you're a squirrel hunter. The squirrels really love them. But the squirrels also like acorns as well. So you have a little bit of everything when you have the oak. So this, this is just me personally, how I'm gonna be choosing. This big oak, it stays. Everything else around it, these eastern red cedars, there is no shortage of eastern red cedars on this farm. So those eastern red cedars are gone. They provide pretty much, uh, the only thing they provide really is cover. And uh, this isn't really going to be uh, cut and managed for bedding habitat. So I'm not worried about that too much. We got tons of stands of eastern red cedar. I could cut my entire life and I'd never get all their eastern red cedar. But So those are definitely gone. No brainer there. Um, the oak behind it. That's gone. It's just not as good as this one over here. Hickory, that's gone. Hickory tree's gone. It doesn't provide as much timber value and it doesn't provide as much um, in the way of uh, whitetail food forage. All right, and so what's left basically is, uh, you know, this, this eastern red cedars over here, they're, they're all gone. So the hickory that's really close right here, that I'm gonna take that out. And all these tiny little hickories right here, they're gone, including this one here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to take everything out of there. And keep this in mind, guys, as a caveat. So this also is it's very important when you think about your goals. Like I said very at the very beginning, you want to also think about your goals as far as how much canopy cover do you want. Do you want, um, you know, maybe you want 50% uh, canopy cover. That's just something you got to think about. Because I may, you know, take this this tree out and leave this really big nice black oak in if i just want like a very you know heavy tsi cut i may want everything 30 to 40 foot around that tree gone i'm not going to cut quite that heavy i'm looking for somewhere in like the 40 to 60 percent range canopy cover and so you know my goals i can leave these two black oaks as long as i cut everything else around and they're probably 20 foot apart which is a little more close than I'd like but they're so straight and they're so healthy I just can't bring myself to cut down this big magnificent oak or this you know what's going to be a nice magnificent oak they've done so well right here even with having all this stuff out I feel like we take all this stuff out and we let them flourish and come up we're going to have some really nice trees not only for timber 20 30 years down the road when I'm reaching retirement and my kids are the ones benefiting from this but we're also going to have acorns and those acorns they're not going to be the first ones whitetails go to those will be the white oaks most likely and they usually leave them you know they're usually here later on in the fall and even into the winter red oak acorns that are you can if you search hard enough you can find them and those deer I guarantee you they will find them even under the snow so we do got some good uh, forage for deer and it provides uh, a lot of uh, food value in deer and turkeys. And um, oaks in general, they have, I think, some 400 something species that, that use oaks. So, I mean, they're good for all wildlife. This isn't just, you know, for the hunters. This is for, you know, anybody who values an, a diversity of an ecosystem. You have a lot of different animals. You have good diversity that is usually a healthy ecosystem. And so ben benefits that come from oaks are pretty overwhelming. And that's why you always hear, you know, everybody talking about, you, you gotta save your oaks, you gotta do all this. And so <clears throat> I, I, I look to, when I'm thinking about all this stuff, I, I also do, I do value diversity. And um, so if I have a spot where maybe I can clear out and I have a, a nice hickory that's all alone, you know, and there's not a tree around it for 30, you know, not, not anything that's, that's big enough that's gonna crowd it out. You know, I'm definitely leaving that. You know, I got some nice big hickories in here. I got some nice, uh, you know, even some of the stuff that uh, a lot of people won't leave, you know, like hackberry and elm and stuff. You know, I'll leave a few of those in there. It's no big deal. You know, the, el the thing with elms is they usually die when they're, you know, 10 to, to 15 years old, but not always. They get elm disease a lot. So, you know, as you can see from this video, uh, if you're like new to this, um, and I'm certainly no expert or anything like that, but there's a lot to think about. And so <clears throat> that's kind of why I wanted to make this video is because uh, I'm always, I'm always like, I'm sitting here 
out in the woods by myself with, you know, my chainsaw and I'm like looking around and like doing all these things in my head, like trying to figure this out. And I thought, man, I bet if someone who has never done this before in their life that wants to improve their habitat, the first thing they're probably thinking is like, what species am I even keeping? I mean, I, I don't want to wipe the whole forest out. I don't want to, uh, you know, cut down good, good species, but you know, you got to start somewhere. And so I think it's identifying those really, really high value uh, lumber and habitat uh, uh, food sources for your, for your wildlife. I think you find those trees and then you go with those and then you just, it's never going to be perfect. You're never going to cut every single tree, the right tree on every single spot. spot. But um, the value of taking trees out of a forest stand, I have found in the past three or four years of, of messing with this stand that just taking those trees out and letting those other um, higher value trees flourish, those deer just love that new stuff. If you look around here, I've got all kinds of stumps and stuff, and I didn't spray any of those. Um, so a lot of them are actually dead, but uh, some of those in the back and stuff, they're, they're still new. And I didn't spray those. What's going to happen is they're going to have a bunch of uh, buds come up off of them. And you can see I've been... Uh, cutting these hickories back here So these hickories they're gonna have uh, uh, Sprouts come off of them uh, All these trees especially like the elm over there It's gonna have sprouts come off of it and that is all woody brows for deer. They're gonna love it last time I've uh, last few years I've done TSI I'll cut a stump. It'll have a bunch of uh, sprouts come off of it and every single bud on those sprouts is is pinched off a uh, deer has come up and, and nibbled that right off. They absolutely love that new growth. And so <clears throat> not only does it provide like a thickness or a bushiness um, for cover to make the deer feel really welcome while they're in here, but it also provides nesting habitat for turkeys. Turkeys love to rear their young in this really bushy area with lots of uh, you know new growth. There's lots of, of insects for their poults to eat. Um, and it's just very, very valuable area. So I've got a lot of cutting to do today, guys. If you enjoyed that video, uh, hit the like button. And if you wanna see more, uh, and uh, if you like the outdoors, homesteading, and uh, hunting, fishing, I, I try to do all that on this channel. I know uh, YouTube algorithm doesn't like channels that do all kinds of stuff, but I just, I do a lot of stuff and, and I don't have one thing that I'm super passionate about. I'm sort of passionate about the whole outdoor aspect of, of everything, so. If you don't like that, cool. But if you do and want to see more, uh, you can subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, um, take it easy. Happy hunting.